Hello, this is Hilary Weller. This video describes how to prove that linear advection schemes can serve mass. A mass can be or, uh, mass or the integral quantity of uh, the dependent variable of PDE over space. So we're thinking about the advection scheme. Uh, so we assume that we have a dependent variable phi of the linear advection equation, so rate of change of phi with time plus the velocity, plus the rate of change of phi with space, is equal to zero. And we can show, for the linear advection equation, for the continuous equation, we can show that total mass, the total mass of phi is conserved. We define the total mass to be the integral over the domain of phi. We need to assume that phi has periodic boundary conditions, so that if, if um, some of phi disappears out of one boundary, it comes out, comes out of the other. So we assume that phi at position x equals 0 is equal to phi at position x equals 1 for all time. And then we can, to prove conservation, we can calculate the rate of change of mass with time. So we, um, in order to calculate the rate of change of mass with time, we substitute uh, this equation into here. So we get the rate of change of uh, Here's how mass, how mass is defined, rate of change of mass with time. Um, and then we move the differential inside the integral. And then now we've got d phi by dt here, we can replace it with minus u d phi dx because we are solving the linear advection equation. And we can cancel out uh, the dx's, uh, which, and we can take the, the u we assume to be constant, so we take it outside the integral. Then we get the integral um, between 0 and 1 d phi, mm -hmm. which is just uh, phi at what minus u times phi at what phi of 1 minus phi of u. We know we have peri periodic boundary conditions, so this is equal to 0. So the rate of change with mass with time is 0, mass is conserved. Does the same thing ho hold for a numerical method? Let's consider the forward in time, backward in space advection scheme. So rather than having this continuous equation for phi, we now have a discrete equation with phi at the new time step being equal to phi at the old time step minus the current number times the uh, spatial gradient of phi. So now uh, we also need to define how mass is defined um, in this uh, discrete space. So the mass at time level n plus 1 is defined to be the sum over all points of delta x, that's a difference, the, the uh, spatial space size of the space step multiplied by phi at position j at time level n plus 1, summing up over all the positions j, and delta x is the distance between these xj points. Now we can... Sub, you can use the FTBS scheme to work out what phi at time level n plus 1 is, so we substitute this into here and get this equation. Um, now we can see that we've got, if we um, break up the sum, we can see that here we've got the sum of the phi jn's, so that's just the mass at time level n. And then for these terms, we can take the current number out of the sum, because we assume it's constant, we can, uh, we've already taken delta x out, so then we've got the sum of, sum of this plus the sum of that. So how are we going to work out this term here? We've got, we're summing different things. We can um, change the, change the uh, indices here. So here we've got uh, mass at time level n again, and we can rewrite this term, rather than summing phi at j minus 1 from 1 to nx, we can sum phi j and sum from 0 to nx minus 1. This is exactly the same thing. And now we can see, now that we're summing the same things, and we can see that most of them cancel. So all we're left with, the only ones that don't cancel are the end points. So here we've got phi at nx doesn't cancel, and here we've got phi at 0 doesn't cancel. So this is what we're left with. And again, we're assuming periodic boundary conditions. So phi at 0 is equal to phi at the end point. So this term is zero, and we're left with the mass um, at time level n. Uh, so due to the periodic boundary conditions, uh, mass is conserved. We've got 
mass at time level n plus 1 is equal to mass at time level n. We can also think about conservation of higher moments, for example the variance of phi. This is the variance of phi is conserved under the real linear advection, the continuous equations. So the, the variance is defined as the, the integral over space of phi squared. Um, and we can calculate the rate of change of variance under linear advection in the same way. So we uh, find dv by dt, we substitute in the definition of dv by dt, um, and now we can um, differentiate this term, make it into 2 phi d phi by dt, and then use the linear advection equation to swap d phi by dt with minus u d phi by dx. Cancel out the dx's, leaves us with the integral between 0 and 1 of phi dx multiplied by minus 2u. Uh, we can integrate that, uh, gives us uh, int integral of 2 phi is just is going to be phi squared. Um, and again, due to the periodic boundary conditions, phi squared at the end at position 1 minus phi squared at position 0 is equal to 0, so the variance is conserved. Is variance conserved by a numerical scheme? Let's consider the forward in time, backward in space advection scheme. Uh, so we've got phi at position j time level n plus 1 is equal to phi at the previous time level minus the current number times the spatial gradient. So we can calculate the various at time level n plus 1 from this. So we've got the sum over all the points of delta x multiplied by uh, phi j at n plus 1 squared. And we can substitute in the formula for phi j n plus 1 into here to give us this expression. We can um, multiply out the square here to give us a, a very long expression. Um, going to do some cancelling in the same way and see what we're left with. We're left with this expression here. Um, and now this, this expression is not going to be zero. This is always going to be, this expression is always going to be greater than one. And if the current number is between 0 and 1, which it needs to be for stability in FTBS, then uh, we can see that the variance is always going to decrease, uh, because this expression here will be positive. Um, so FTBS doesn't conserve the variance. The variance is decreasing, um, which is consistent with the von Neumann stability analysis for forward in time, backward in space, which shows that the scheme is damping. Um, at, the, at the end of this chapter there are some examples asking you to do this kind of analysis on some other schemes um, and then you can also find the answers um, either at the end of this chapter or in the lecturer's version of the notes. Uh, so that concludes this chapter which introduces some of the concepts of numerical analysis.